Namaste from all the guys. My name is Arvind and welcome back to YouTube channel. So guys, in the previous video, we discussed about whether Norway is going to end education for the international students. And today's video is also related to that. And we are going to see that where is this heading? There have been several debates on several newspaper articles about this. And uh, one of the most comprehensive and well-written piece of article written about this uh, is in uh, a newspaper, an online newspaper, which is called as University World News. It is in front of me. So I'm going to present a few of the excerpts from that. And towards the end, uh, I'm going to talk about this thing that whether it is good or bad for you as an international student that this uh, fees is being uh, in place for the international students. So please watch this video till the end if this decision affects you directly or indirectly. So guys, before I start uh, this video, I would like to say that the link of this article, which you are seeing on the screen right now, you can find it in the description and it is a very well detailed and very well written. I was really impressed by it and I thought that I should make a video about it. So giving you a bit of history about the free education in the Nordics. So Nordic is, uh, Nordic is, you can say, it consists of the five countries, that is Iceland, Finland, Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. So if you can say in 2000, around in 2000, every country in the Nordic region was given free education. So it was Denmark in 2006, which abolished this free education for the international students. Then it was Sweden in 2011. After that, it was Finland in 2016. And now the proposition has been made by the current government on the budget, which they presented on 6th of October, that the, this free education for international students should be abolished. So who are these international students? First of all, let's understand. International students are the students who are outside the European Union or European economic area, right? So if you are in, say, Bangladesh, if, if you are in Africa or any other place, uh, then you are into this category if you're not anyhow linked to you. And there are also a few exceptions. For example, if you are an exchange student, then also this rule doesn't apply for you. If you are in Norway and you are part of the Norwegian insurance scheme, then you are not uh, the part of this uh, uh, rule again. It doesn't matter whether your nationality is, say, Indian and you are living in Norway. Still, this rule doesn't apply for you. You will still have um, the free education in the Norwegian higher education system. And definitely, if you are a Norwegian citizen, then this rule um, doesn't apply for you. You are still going to get this free education. Okay, So that is the first perspective. Because people were asking me that I am in Norway, but I am from India. What happens? Then I said, uh, no, this is not for you. Then another thing which I want to talk about uh, is that we need to understand this thing. That on 6th of October, the budget was presented. The final decision will be made in a debate uh, in the parliament which will be happening around mid of december okay so but this debate is not going to happen for the first time in the parliament it has happened previously also i don't know exact number but it has happened quite uh, uh, quite often but this time it is a bit different because the ruling government which is a majority so they have proposed this and they have uh, and they believe that they have uh, sufficient numbers so that uh, this uh, legislation which they're going to bring in to effect that is going to be passed. So guys, there is a lot of debate happening right now in Norway. The people who are in favor of this move, they are saying that since Norwegian students who go abroad, they have to pay the fees. Why shouldn't it be the same for the students coming from international countries to Norway? And as per the data collected by these people, uh, they are saying that there are around 25,000 uh, sorry, around 25,000 international students in Norway and for one student or one study place approximately 200,000 that is 2 lakh Norwegian crones is the amount of money that is spent. So if we do some simple mathematics, the, uh, the government says or you can say the people who are in favor of this uh, legislation, they say that 5 billion Norwegian krone is the burden of the tax that the taxpayers of uh, the Norway residents have to pay, right? So that is their whole thing. But those who are against this, they are saying that there is uh, 
the quality of education is not that great that is what they're saying it's not i'm not saying that right <laughs> it is based upon the research that i've done that i've done so they're saying the quality of education is not that great language barrier cold and dark country so it means that the num the students will not come here and again the data is showing that in sweden because i told you that sweden had already abolished this uh, rule about 10 years ago so they say that there was a drop of about 76 percent of the students international students applying to these uh, universities right so guys now let's talk about pros and cons of this move or if suppose this legislation is passed and i'm not going to talk about the pros and cons for the norwegian government right i'm going to talk in terms of uh, uh, for the international students that what would be the pros and what would be the cons so let's talk about the pros so the first pro which i think for the students would be that now the competition is less if suppose you have this capacity uh, to you know to pay the fees then the competition is less so right now i know that for example for data science courses in university of oslo or in you know, like the top notch universities in norway even a cgp of 8.5 you can be you know bit uh, in a dwindling state whether i will get it or not get it but i think so uh, if there is this uh, threshold of uh, the fees then most of the students won't apply so it means that uh, you you have a better chance and and again, sorry, and again, it depends how much the fees is. So the fees is expected to be around, uh, that is what the numbers are saying, around 200,000 knock uh, for a year. And what else is the pro? So let me tell you one thing that if suppose you are back in India and you did your bachelor's say four years ago and then you have work experience, relevant work experience. And after that, you come here and you get admission. So I would highly recommend that come here because you know countries such as the US, Australia, Canada, UK, they are already having such a great amount of influx of students that getting job after this uh, completing your studies, it's really difficult. But if you have an experience of say four to five years and then you are applying for masters here, I think that uh, your chances of getting a job would be very high based upon the work experiences, uh, work experience you have. And because this has happened to me, uh, I got my first job based upon my work experience because I had five years of experience in India and I got a job in the same field. And another pro could be since now, even the international students will be paying, so universities will be getting more money and then you can say the quality of education might also improve. So this is just my speculation, right? And on the other hand, what would be the con? The con would be that as of now, most of the students who are here, they were getting this the same quality of education for free. But now you might have to pay, um, say, exorbitant amount of fees. And on the top of it, it's not just the fees, right? It's not just that you have to spend 20 lakhs for the tuition. It's also that you might have to the sustenance allowance, which is around for a year, 12 lakh rupees. So all in all, a two year degree, it can cost you around 50 lakhs. And in the same, maybe you can, if you are brilliant, you can go to the US and uh, to the top universities in the US. So the con would be that if you have great talent, if you have money, why not to go to the top university? Why would you come here? So see, I'm not demeaning the universities in Norway, right? Because I am myself in academia as an associate professor in Oslo Met. So I'm not saying that our university is bad or the universities in Norway are bad, but this is just what is floating around. You know, there are plethora of articles on internet and you will see that uh, the, the universities in Norway uh, people are saying that they are, they are not that great and even if you go by the rankings such as QS ranking and all of those metrics there also you don't find them but that is not the case it doesn't mean that the Norwegian universities are not producing um, the enough quality of the students right so but the con is if you get it for free and now you have to pay say 20 to 30 lakhs then that is the biggest con right you have to shell a lot of money and then another con is because suppose, as I mentioned previously, that for a two years degree, you have to pay, say, around 50 lakhs, uh, all in all. And then on the top of it, uh, in order to secure a job in certain fields, for example, in medicine, you might have to learn Norwegian, which is not an easy nut to crack. OK, on the other hand, if you go to, say, Australia or Canada, an English speaking country, the chances of getting a job would be 
bit easier because there is not a barrier of this language. So that could also be a con. But again, on the positive side, I know a lot of people who have come to Norway and within two years time, they, you know, crack this uh, language and then they found job. So my sister-in-law, she did that. So Jita Jagta Dabuna, <laughs> she is the one. So I'm not uh, creating any fictitious uh, hopes over here. So it is possible. So, I mean, these were a few pros and cons, which I thought uh, um, this... Uh, legislation if it is passed that would be but still if you are planning to apply to these Norwegian universities for autumn 2023 I would suggest that apply for now because it is already 15th October has passed so it means that for most of the universities the applications are now open so please go ahead and apply so most of these universities they have this notification that the students international students who want to study from autumn 2023 they must be prepared to pay the fees but who will decide the structure of the fees that liberty is given to the universities as far as I understood and the logic here is for example if there is a very famous course where there are a lot of students and one professor that course will cost lower on the other hand if you go to the course where there are less students and there is just one professor that will go higher so it's not like there will be just one number so as far as i understood reading the various articles the cost for each course will be different okay so let's wait and let's be positive let's think that uh, everything will be in the favor of uh, uh, the international students so just go ahead and apply and if you have any comments if you also think about pros and cons about um, having fees in the education for, for sorry having fees for international students then please uh, write it in the comment and uh, thank you for watching this video hopefully everything will be great and namaste from norway and thank you for everything